Hello, welcome to another artwork focus video. So as before, I'll go through at this level so we can look at the cards in totality and then halfway through the video, I will zoom in and we'll look at the artwork up close. So this time round, I've uh, added three more cards. We've got 18 cards here instead of the usual 15 I've been doing in these videos. And that's because these came out of my EDH toolkit binder and I've got a section in there for, you know, colourless cards basically that will go in any deck. They're, I think they're all artefacts actually. Um, and um, there were 18 there. So, so I figured yeah might as well show them all rather than do 15 and then leave three that didn't end up on camera. So let's have a look. So we've got Felwar Stone to the cast. It's an artefact as you can see here. Tap Add one mana to your mana pool. This mana may be of any type that any land opponent controls can produce. Play this ability as an interrupt. So yeah, this mana may be of any type that any land opponent controls can produce. So you'll notice this is a white border. Uh, at the time I bought these, this was the cheapest way of getting the alternate art for these because I wanted like the original, or sorry, the original art rather than the, the more modern art version. And we've got Dark Steel Ingot, so three to cast, it's indestructible. Tap, add one mana of any colour to your mana pool. Got a mana list here from. N12. This I think has turned up in a couple of different versions of the artwork. This is the M12 artwork version. Three to cast, tap, add one mana of any colour to your mana pool. Spectral searchlight, three to cast, tap, choose a player. That player adds one mana of any colour he or she chooses to his or her mana pool. Then we've got Mycosynth Wellspring. Two to cast. When it enters the battlefield, or it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it on into your hand, and then shuffle your library. And we've got an um, armillary sphere, two to cast, two tap, sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, then put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Temple Bell, three to cast. This is from M11. Tap, each player draws a card. Illuminated f Folio, five to cast. One, tap it. Reveal two cards from your hand that share a colour. Draw a card. As is Blueprints, six to cast. It's got an echo on it, so during your next upkeep, after this permanent comes under your control, pay its casting cost or sacrifice it. Tap to draw a card. Sun Droplet, two to cast. Now with this, whenever you're dealt damage, put that many charge counters on Sun Droplet. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, you may remove a charge counter from Sun Droplet. If you do, you gain one life. Vence's Journal, five to cast. This comes from um, Scars of Mirrodin, or well, this version. I'm not sure how many times this has been reprinted, actually. You have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life for each card in your hand. Crystal Ball, three to cast, from M11, this one. One tap, scry two. Mark. Mask of Avacyn, two to cast. This is from, what would that be, Innistrad? Yeah, I think that's right. That block anyway. <laughs> um, equipped creature gets plus one, plus two, and has heads proof. So it can't be the target spells or abilities your opponent's control. It's three to equip. Bone Horde. Four to cast artifact equipment. It's one of these living weapons. So when it, when this equipment enters the battlefield, 
you put a zero zero black germ creature token onto the battlefield then attach it to it so it's sort of ready to go if you like but of course what you can do is also equip it to two to something else and you can see the ability here Quick creature gets plus x plus x, where x is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Nim Deathmantle. Two to cast, another Scars of Mirrodin card. A quick creature gets plus two plus two, has Intimidate, and is a black zombie. Whenever a non token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay four. If you do, return that card to the battlefield and attach Nim Deathmantle to it, equipped for four. Culling Dice, two to cast, sacrifice a tap, sacrifice a creature, put a charge counter on Culling Dice, one, sacrifice Culling Dice, draw a card for each charge counter on Culling Dice. Spine of Isha, so this is actually from one of the Commander decks, seven to cast, when Spine of Isha enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent, when Spine of Isha is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Spine of Isha to its owner's hand. We've got still Hellkite, because why not? Six to cast, so five five with flying. Artifact creature dragon. Two still Hellkite gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. X destroy non land permanent with converted mana cost X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by still Hellkite this turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. As you can see there, still quite as flying. So, you'll notice with all of those, they all have interesting utility on them that you know, would fit into any deck. So, let's zoom in and now take a look at what we can actually see artwork-wise. Let's try. There we go. Try that out. So, you know, fairly simple piece of art there, but uh, there, I don't know, there's something about the look of this one. Um, you know, this, the original artwork there. I like the sort of watercolour look as well. Oh, Dark Steel Ingot. Another piece of artwork that's fairly simple, but uh, I don't know something about it, very evocative. And of course when you're in this close, the other nice thing is you tend to notice the, the shades of colour a lot more and the amount of different colours there as well. Manolith. Let's try and straighten it up a little bit. Yeah, notice the, um, the different uh, colours of mana represented here. You can see. You have the white, green, blue, black, red. Another uh, piece of artwork with some nice clouds. Okay, spectral searchlight. Very cool. Again, nice when you can see this up close. Let's see what we've got here, because this is one of these cards where, you know, I'd never paid much attention to it. And what's interesting with this is, yeah, when you look at the card from a distance, it, the bit in the middle sort of looks like a hole, but now I'm not sure <laughs> what this is supposed to be. 
Yeah, interesting, isn't it? I thought that was a crater originally, but uh, it's not as simple as that. It's almost as if everything's upside down. Hopefully they got the artwork the right way up. <laughs> oh, Millery Sphere. Oh, yeah. Okay, again, yeah, you can see the different colours of magic here. So we've got what? White in the middle, red, green, blue. The purpley one, I suppose, is black. Ah, oh, the... Hang on. Wow, never spotted that before. Can you see? Can you see the face in the darkness? There you go, look, the eyes. Wow, never noticed that. Interesting, okay. Temple bell, so we're probably going to see a bit more detail here. I'm not sure what that is in the middle there. Quite. I mean, you've got these figures here, obviously, and this is one of these bells where, you know, it's rung by these big wooden hammers, by the look of things, hitting them. But is this a ship of some description? I don't know. There's another character over here as well, I think. Yeah. Okay, what do we see here? Interesting, you know, like these, I suppose, are shadows. With uh, the illumination coming in from the side off camera or off frame. Not quite sure what's over here. Looks like some sort of casket, maybe. Container. And down here, what do you reckon? Maybe another container? I'm not sure. It's unusual shapes. And this is sort of what? Top to bottom writing, maybe? Oops. Hmm, interesting. Okay. There's this blueprints from Urza Block. Oh, yeah. Now you can get in close and start to see the actual blueprints. It looks like we're in some, inside some sort of dome here. Mm. Again, interesting. Um, you know, sort of shadow lighting effects. Sun droplet. Nice clouds again. And I'm assuming this is supposed to be some sort of armour, maybe. Vince's journal. Another one of these cards that combines, um, as, you, as you saw when I went first through these, you know, combines the whole you have no minimum hand size with a, you know, handy utility as well. In this case, life gain for each card in your hand. Pretty straightforward. I mean, again, we look at the engraving, whatever you want to call it, the metal work on the front here. Got an extra note or page in here as well. Okay, what do we see in Crystal Ball? Because this looks pretty interesting. Is this supposed to be... Yeah, I mean, these are candles, clearly. 
So this is what's supposed to be some sort of wax substance. This looks very lava-like, but if it's the same material as the candles, then it's supposed to be wax, I suppose. And then we've got this interesting crystal ball in the centre here. Yeah, it's really nice up close, actually. Okay, Mosque of Aversin. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Bone Hoarder. That must be uh, <laughs> one of the bones that it's hoarding. Pretty dark. And then we have Nim Death Mantle. Now what is that structure in the background? Any ideas anybody? I mean these look like vents here. But I'm not sure what this is behind the the death mantle. <laughs> Can't tell. It's weird. It looks like some sort of very rectangular cottage. Hmm. Then we have culling dice. So like almost like teeth structures here. I can sort of imagine this. Like snapping shut. <laughs> and then look all of the structures around here. This is very um, alien like, you know, Goega almost. I mean, this isn't really, I don't think. It's um, not quite the same, but yeah, very spiky. But these look like the pieces from sort of inside an alien hive. Okay, so you can see there probably more clearly the spine <laughs> as it runs across here and then around. Very nice mountains there and uh, bit of, I don't know if that's supposed to be fog or we're so high up it's clouds, probably maybe clouds. And yeah, still high hell kite, a classic, I think. Was scars are mirrored in the first set that is turned up in, I'm not sure. Yeah. Got the watermark um on there as well, which I didn't sort of point out. You know, just admire this. Not much to really say about it. I mean, I, this again, here. Not sure what that is. Is that a tail? Can't really tell. And so you can see it's sort of body here, and this looks like this is a tail going out here. Unless it must loop, or maybe it loops back round again. It's so long. there we have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It was really interesting to look through some of those. I'd never really explored um, you know, the artwork on, on a lot of those and I was particularly interested in the um, you know, the crystal ball. That was, that was super cool to get close up to that. And um, what's the other one? There was another one there that was just fascinating. Yeah, I suppose the temple bell was fascinating to sort of get in close and see that. Um, so yeah, they each had their own uh, unique qualities there and, and different things that get you thinking about Magic the Gathering artwork. So thanks once again for watching, bye for now, and I will catch you in a future video.